Hey friends, Susan Gregory here from Faith Driven Life and another episode of Your Journey in Faith. In this lesson, I'm calling Guard Your Words. And this is a big deal, particularly in today's culture and all the things that is going on, the things that are going on in our, in our society and uh, all the things on the news and on television shows. Words, words, words. We hear so many of them and we say so many of them. This is what God's word tells us. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And that's from Ephesians 4.29. So words have a rippling effect. This is This is what I've been thinking about a lot lately. There were some words spoken to me, not face to face, but someone wrote me a text message. And there were things in that text message that were just not, certainly not edifying, inappropriate. There was foul language in it. And this person was expressing their opinion, but they were sending it to me, this message to me. And, you know, it really bothered me. Um, this is a person that I like and, and that, that even that doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter my emotions about it. But it kind of put me into a spin because it's like, okay, what do I do with this? And when someone sends messages and when we send messages, we really need to take responsibility for the words that we're sending out there and realizing that our words have power. And boy, if you ever want to question what the Bible has to say about words, it's one of the foremost things in the whole scriptures. God, he made the earth. He created everything through his words. Jesus is the word that became flesh. God became flesh. He came to the earth as in as a word the word became flesh and dwelt among us i mean words are a big deal yet we treat them so insignificantly and with so little respect and little value but believe me they have value and they have a rippling effect we just throw them out there but we don't always realize and don't always take responsibility for the power of the words, for what those words can mean. And so because of this situation that I'm experiencing right now, and and it's put me into a, you know, one of those things where I've had to really pray about it. And the reason is, first of all, it was such a, a nasty negative message. And I'm not used to that. Um, this, like I say, this person was voicing their opinion about something, but I'm not used to that. I, you know, I, I live in a culture, most people realize that I, that know me. Um, I would say everybody that knows me knows that I don't use foul language. It's on the, the rarest occasions that I ever say anything negative. And that's only because of years of training. A lot of the things that, have, that I'm talking about today are, are really important to me. And I've, I've, held on to this teaching and and my mind has been renewed and is being renewed even more so people don't say things or or use foul language around me very often and um a lot of times i get people oh susan i'm sorry i said that um and it's you know it's just because i don't use it people notice even i don't i don't ever say anything please don't use that language or yo why do you say those words i don't i don't do that i just take on you know how i behave and and people see that but but the word but our words are very important so not only do i do i as the person who these words were said to or sent to do i need to deal with them and um not hold them against that person, to make sure that I forgive that person for even saying these things, not to judge that person, and plus not to 
spread any word about this person. Like, oh gosh, you'd never believe what was said to me or, you know, anything like that. And so there's a lot of layers when people say things. And there's things that we need to do about when we receive messages or hear messages. And then there are the responsibility we each need to take for our own words. The word says, He who guards his mouth and his tongue guards his soul from troubles. That's from Proverbs 21, 23. And there's a really powerful little message. I remember it was told to me when I was a child and it was told to me in a little different way in the way than compared to the way I'm going to share it with you. But the, the message, the, the point is the same. And the one I'm going to share with you is from a 19th century, uh, century Jewish folk tale. And it tells of a man who went about town slandering the rabbi of the little town, the little community. And one day, realizing that many of the things that he had said were unfair and wrong, he decided to go to the rabbi's house and he begged the rabbi for forgiveness. Now that's a big deal. So then the rabbi told the man that he would forgive him on one condition. And that would be the man needed to go home and take a feather pillow from his house, cut it up, cut it open, and scatter the feathers on by the sea. And after he had done that, then he should come back to the rabbi's house and they would have a conversation. So the man was puzzled by it, but he wanted to make sure that, you know, he fulfilled this and so he followed the request and he went home and he got the pillow and he took it down to the beach and he slid it open and he took all you know let all the feathers fly out of it and then he went back to the rabbi's house and he was a little puzzled by it by this request and so the man he was really happy it's just like oh boy here I've said all these unkind things to the rabbi but you know, he let me off with, with just that. You know, boy, I'm really thankful. But then the rabbi said to him, the man said, am I forgiven now? And the rabbi said, just one more thing, just one more thing. Go now and gather up all of those feathers that you sent out from your pillow. And the man immediately said, but that's impossible. The wind has already scattered them. And the rabbi said, precisely. And though you truly wish to correct the evil you've done, it is as impossible to repair the damage done by your words as it is to recover the feathers. Words are powerful. Words are like seeds that go into the heart of people. That's why gossip, that's why the Lord hates gossip, absolutely hates gossip. He hates when we, even if something is true about something, that we would share it. He hates hates people when when they bear tales, when they, you know, are tattles. And that's because of the power of words, the power of words that we send. So... This is another thing that is, is a teaching from Proverbs 26, 20. It says, for lack of wood, the fire goes out. And where there is no whisperer, contention quiets down. So if you ever hear something when, that, uh, you know, someone says, just don't spread it. Just don't, just don't listen to it and then don't spread it. I remember one time, this was years ago, and this was in a professional setting that a, a person said so there were absolute lies about me. And um, I went and talked to my boss because it, it confused me. It's like, I don't know why this, I didn't work with this person any longer. I had worked with them and was in a ministry actually. And I went and talked to my boss and I said, you know, uh, I don't know what to do about this. He's spreading these lies. And my boss said, well, let me give you a little story. He said, you can either become a firefighter and 
you know, gets spends so much time going around trying to put these little fires out, or you can just go about your business and continue doing good, continue doing right, and pretty soon the fires will die out on their own. And that's actually what happened. And it was a really valuable lesson. I, as, a, as a young professional, I, I so valued the lesson that this man gave me. And it's the exact same thing that we're learning in Proverbs 26.20. For lack of wood, the fire goes out. And where there is no whisperer or no gossiper, no one giving more power to the message, and then the contention quiets down. So this is really, really important. Another topic that is associated with this is put-down humor. Very, very common in a lot of the sitcoms today. Just watch a sitcom. I don't know if you watch them. I, I frankly don't watch them very often. But you'll find they're really common there, but it's, it's a type of humor. It's called put-down humor, where you say something unkind to someone to laugh about. And it's like, oh, <laughs> we're supposed to all laugh about that. But, you know, it's not really very funny. Put-down humor. You know, it's like... Um, Oh, you really no need to blow your nose. You've got such a bad cold. Or, or is that a banana, not really a nose? It's just like, what? You know, it's like, you know, those are the kinds of jokes you see on, on sitcoms. But it's put down humor. It's like, what's good about that? It's very clear what we are to do. In Galatians 5, and 23, we're taught, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering or patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. So if you make the decision, and if I make the decision, and if we make the decision, if the body of Christ would make the decision, this is, we're called to do this, but it's our choice. This is part of the discipline, the, the, you know, the structure, the way that part of the Lord's ways that we want to live by. If we make sure that every word that comes out of our mouth, every gesture we have towards another person only is of love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We're, we're doing well. And so I remember as a child, my mother taught me, if you can't say anything that's nice, don't say anything at all. And that's what Proverbs 17, 27 is saying. He who has knowledge spares his words. And a man of understanding is of a calm spirit. Now that's a good word. So think about these things. Think about the words you're saying. Do you gossip? And if you have, just ask the Lord to forgive you and then make this decision today that you won't do it anymore. Are there times that you use put down humor? Are there times that you say unkind things to people, to your children, to your spouse, to your siblings, to your parents, to friends, to co-workers? Stop it. Stop it. It is wise. You are wise to stop it. And it is good for your soul to not have those things coming out of your soul. The scripture says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So you don't want these things coming out of you. You want to have good words, good words coming out of you. Now, if you want to learn a little more about this and have a list of scriptures that really talk about what, how to guard your tongue, how to not gossip, and also the kinds of words that you want to use, how you can be a blessing, you can put the good seeds of God's truth into other people's heart, you can be a blessing to others, then I've prepared a download tool that you can have. And so you just, it's all totally free, of course, and you just need to go to the website with the link below and tell us where to send it and we'll send it to you right away. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Um, watch your words. 
make sure you're using good words. And if negative words are spoken to you, let them, you know, kind of be that duck. Let them roll off the roll off your back. Pray for the person that is saying those things. Ask the Lord to to help their the scales from their eyes to be removed and for them to draw closer to the Lord. There's clearly things in their heart. Don't condemn them. Don't judge them. And then don't repeat them. Don't slander the person. Don't don't be a tail bearer. And I hope this helps you. Okay. Bye for now. This is Susan Gregory with another lesson from Your Journey in Faith.